Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is a special video because today we're checking out Material Design 3. Yes, everyone knows about Material Design and how much of an impact it has made on the design world and the way we design. So today I'm going to show you everything that has changed in Material 3.0, all the design changes being done, all the UI and interaction changes being done, as well as all the amazing visual design changes that have been introduced in Material 3. A lot has changed, but a lot of fundamentals remain the same. So without further ado, let's just get started with the video. All right, so the first thing I really want to do is get into Google's own website for Material Design m3.material.io is what they're calling. So the first thing that you would notice is a lot of difference in color and color implementation. Everything on screen changes, all the colors changed based on images and visual elements. There is a primary color and a primary container color, then a secondary color, secondary container color, so on and so forth. Now, if you don't know this, you can actually extract colors from images and material design really takes advantage of this. Now, how it has to be done is very simple. There are accent colors and neutral colors. Again, two elements here. Primary key color is the one which is most prominent on screen or which takes most of the focus. The secondary key color is the secondary key color is a slightly desaturated version of the primary key color and a slightly darker version of that as well. Neutral colors, however, are complete desaturated versions of the accent colors, as you can see here. So they're more towards the gray side of these colors on top. And as we saw before, there is a color and there's a container. Color, container. Of course, if you want to see how text over these colors will work, there's a primary color and there's a on primary color. So that on primary will be the color of the text or the content that you put on that color. I won't go over this, but they've also given how you can implement illustrations along with the whole color scheme. So if you plan to put in illustrations on a screen, this is the right way to do it. They've given a complete guide. I suggest checking it out and seeing what is correct and what is not really correct. Now, if you go back to the home screen, there is a special line of text which says Google's most expressive and adaptive design system. And this is where we're gonna see the next big changes come into play. Now, earlier material design really focused on responsive design because five to six years ago, responsive design was the industry standard. However, over the year, an adaptive approach to designing has been taking place and designers are moving towards that as well. Just before we begin with this segment, what is adaptive design? A certain user interface is made separately for mobile, separately for desktop or laptops, and separately for even larger or smaller screens. So when you stretch a device, the design doesn't adjust accordingly. There might be some elements which are removed, there might be some elements there might be grids which are changed, there might be elements which are added. So an adaptive design really doesn't care much about, the, about how a layout will respond on a different screen. In exchange for that, designers just use different layouts for different screens. And that is beneficial because everybody uses different devices differently. Now the first major change Google has made for the adaptive design systems is by, is by adjusting typography. They now have a section called applying and scaling type. So in this case, of course, you have your standard design system for typography. What are the sizes of headlines, titles, labels, body, etc. However, the most interesting part about this is scaling the type for different screen sizes and types of displays. There is a general scaling. If the screen is dynamic and the size increases, then you can increase the font size like headline and body and you keep other title elements etc the same size. Like glass and grace here on screen are the same size. However, only the headline and the body text have increased in size. Similarly with multi-column scaling. So if a card pans two columns, the, sky, the scale of the type will increase. However, if the cards maintain their one column width, these cards at the bottom maintain their one column dimension. However, the one on top spreads across two columns. So as soon as the card is covering more space, only then the size of the type 
increase. That is a very interesting approach rather than changing the size of every font to maintain the same amount of white space. They've not changed the typography or the size of the type at the bottom. However, if there is more white space, in this case, it's this wide card, there can be an increase in size of the text. Now, this time around, even though this is not adaptive design, but how you can pair type with different kinds of icons. If you have an, uh, if you have a certain icon style, a certain different kind of type might work for you. That's a pretty nice guide to look at. Now, the next thing is of course the layouts and the grids. So this time, since it's adaptive, I'll put an example on screen for you guys to see how a mobile app, when it changes to like a tablet, there is an adaptive design taking place, designs change, the type of cards being shown changes, Everything really changes because it's adaptive. We already saw how we can change type for larger screens. They also now have something called anatomy, which means how and where something can be placed on screen. So in this case, they have an anatomy of an app bar on the left, a navigation bar on the top, and a body on the bottom right. They also have different dimensions that you can try this out with and experiment with the layout. They're also focusing on component swapping. Since the design is adaptive, you can have a different component for different screen sizes. In this case, if it's a phone, it will have a full screen model. But on the right, there is a pop-up model where, which is replacing the full screen model. So Material 3 is not only about designing elements, but also understanding what kind of elements will fit in what kind of containers. Now, of course, there are some things which already exist in responsive design and an adaptive approach is not needed. Things like repositioning. In responsive design, if you stretch out the screen, there are certain things that which will expand, certain things that will contract and change slightly in dimension. Now, another interesting change they've introduced is a guide for foldable devices. Now, we all know the Samsung Z Flips and uh, Z Folds Coming into play, we also have companies like Motorola making foldable or flippable phones. There are also a bunch of Chinese companies doing the same. So we're gonna see more foldable phones come in the next four to five years, and more people will like that whole foldable aesthetic. So to design for these foldable phones, Google has also taken out a guide for Material Design 3. Since the designs are adaptive, it will be easier to design for different screen sizes separately rather than focusing on, rather than solving the problem of a responsive design. Now they have two states, unfolded and folded. Folded will act identical to your mobile, to your general mobile screen, because it's narrower and a mobile screen will fit perfectly with this. The only change here is the height. So you will have to make sure that elements are placed in such a way that they're easily accessible by one thumb or one finger. An unfolded screen has two variants. One is the unfolded landscape, the other is unfolded portrait. The unfolded landscape is more wide, whereas unfolded portrait is taller in size. The unfolded portrait reminds me a lot of the general tablet size. They already have an option for portrait tablet which is pretty cool. So the whole concept of adaptive is already being used with Webflow. The unfolded landscape, as you can see, have more than one column and the unfolded portrait has only one column, as you can see. So there is one column and one navigation bar on the left or on the top, depending on your style. With unfolded landscape, there are two columns. Now foldable screens are complex. So there is a version or a variant called tabletop. So there's a variant for adaptive design called tabletop. I'm sure you've seen on the ads, the person is just flipping the phone halfway or on a car dashboard and just go from there. Again, we're following the whole two column rule. I'm really happy they've given a whole reachability chart showing where a person's fingers can reach ideally. They're also guiding you guys to prevent using the top 25% of the screen. So top 25% of the screen is basically unusable in a folded phone. Hence the navigation bar on the left instead of the top. Also, if you have fixed components, you should not place it in the center of the screen because there's a hinge there. So if it's semi-folded or partially folded, people might not be able to see or interact with elements in that area. They've also shown a funny example of how putting a model, a pop-up model in the middle of the screen can be a bad idea if there is a thick hinge in between. Now let's start looking at actual UI design components, things like buttons, cards, chips that we're used to. So if we go into buttons, you will see a major change. 
We already have things like pills and pill buttons, which existed from earlier versions of material. But now what they're introducing are these, these extra large overly padded buttons. Earlier, the, these used to be circles, so they didn't seem super big. But this time around, they're really making them prominent. So for example, this whole edit button or pencil icon here is surrounded by 800 feet of padding. And since they're playing with colors, the colors of these buttons also vary. So if it's a high emphasis button, the background color of the button will be a high emphasis color, like a primary color. The medium emphasis will literally be a monochromatic, slightly darker version or slightly darker shade of the background color. And the low emphasis will literally be white or gray. They've also shown examples of how you can place this. Pretty standard practice. Did you also notice one more thing? The primary button style this time are completely rounded pill kind of shapes instead of the whole rounded buttons. Now, the, now this is a little problem with material design. Love the whole completely rounded button theory, which is fine. Not only does it look good, it also seems like a button to the user since it's uh, pretty much dominating the space here or dominating attention here. Chips had a completely visual overhaul this time. They're now, they're now rounded rectangles. Like we used to have rounded rectangle buttons in material two and one. Now we have rounded rectangle chips and the whole rounded, the whole completely rounded button has been given to the primary button right here. Of course, you can still use the rounded rectangle, but with a lot of padding. The only places that rounded rectangle buttons still exist are the fab buttons, extended fab buttons where there is one icon and one piece of text, like a new task, as you can see on screen and fab icons, which are literally this edit floating button on the bottom. The rounded rectangle look only is supported by fab and extended fab. Common buttons and normal buttons are all completely rounded now. So kind of look like pills. Now another change comes with cards. Now cards are pretty cool, have been pretty standard for a long time, especially with material design. Now with material three, we actually have three different kinds of states of cards. One is elevated, which is just slight amount of shadow behind a colored card, which is the same color as the background. Interesting. The fill is generally a primary color being used upon a base color, which is this uh, slightly beige color. The background color of the card is this slightly gray white. Not sure which color this is. However, there is a nice little outline on the borders. I really like this. However, this kind of border will not work with all kinds of aesthetic. So if you're going for a clean, minimal aesthetic, this border might not go for you. With some other elements like dialogues or models, it's pretty much the same, except the corner radius or the border radius has been increased drastically. Earlier, it was around eight to 16 pixels. Now it's more like 48 pixels for the border radius. I suggest for these little changes like border radius, you do check out the entire guide and read through it. Now everything else remains the same except widgets. You guys know widgets were the center of attention for Google I.O. as well as Android. Now, I, one thing I know 100% sure is that most commercial products or most companies will not appreciate the whole crazy flower look or this whole oblong shape that has been used for weather. Instead, they would like designers to stick to their general designs and the general old widgets they were using so that it can be used for both iOS as well as Android. Now, for all of you guys looking for a kit or a design system kit, you will have the Material 3 design kit on Figma available. It's officially available by Google itself. So you'll have all the original components as well as style guides to guide you through with it. And I suggest you guys also check out, I think I really appreciate some of the elements, especially the outlines on a darker background will look really, really good to be honest. That's it. Material Design 3 wasn't a complete shocker because it already has a lot of new, because it already has a lot of things that really work well for it. A lot of the elements remain the same. A lot of dimensions, navigations, a lot of navigations and card styles remain the same because these work very well for users as well as for designers. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then thumbs up. If you thumbs up, it tells me that you liked the video. Also subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon for videos every Monday as well as Thursday. Yes, twice a week. I'll see you next time, same place, same time. Until then, take care. God bless.